Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, my favorites for the months of September and October because I missed my favorites for the months of September. But you'll see that I don't have that many favorites. I think I was wearing mostly the same fragrances in September and October, so not that many fragrances, but it's not that bad. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about, uh, last time I talked about the fact that I um, ordered the new fragrances by Nikolai. So I ordered their discovery kit, their discovery set, and they made a mistake. They sent me three times the same fragrance. <laughs> So I was a bit disappointed, but they were really nice. Uh, the customer service was really nice and let me keep the one they sent me and send me a brand new one, which is the one that I ordered. <laughs> so yeah, I have more fragrances now, but <laughs> it's nice. Uh, so this is their discovery kit, discovery set with the three 15 ml fragrances. So there is um, Saint Honoré, uh, Macaron Bourbon and Pavlova. So we are going to talk about these ones. And let's start with the first one that I tried, which was, uh, in fact, the one that I preferred. <laughs> so you can see uh, what I wore. So yeah, in two months, uh, yeah, because I received it, I think it was, I don't remember, maybe end of August, beginning of September, when it was released. And this is what I've been wearing uh, so far. So yeah, hopefully I have <laughs> three other bottles because they made a mistake. So yeah, I don't have to spare this one. So I'm really happy in the end <laughs> about their mistake. So they're all supposed to be um, gourmand fragrances, but gourmand fragrances made by Nikolai. So it's not that super sweet. So this is what I like about these fragrances. This one is not super sweet. It's a beautiful vanilla fragrance, nutty really balmy and comforting. This one basically smells like um, dolls, doll heads <laughs> to me. I don't know, it reminds me of the smell of dolls when I was a kid. Usually this is something that I, I feel like when there is benzoin in fragrances. Um, I don't know if they used to scent doll heads with benzoin or... <laughs> I don't know, but when I smell benzoin, usually I think about my childhood and playing with dolls. And I have the, exactly the same impression here. Even if benzoin is not listed in the notes, you have vanilla, amber in the base. Um, I think it has sandalwood also. It's quite woody in the base too. But what I get the most, yes, is this mix with the sandalwood and the vanilla and this nutty feel from the hazelnut, which is really, really nice. Um, it has quite a long, uh, good longevity on me. Yeah, several hours, which is really good for me. It stays really long on my clothes. Um, I wish the opening would stay a bit longer, this nutty part with the haz hazelnut, because on me, in the end, I have mostly vanilla. But yeah, it's still really nice and really comforting. Really enjoying that one. And I think I will keep <laughs> wearing it for, for fall. And I think in winter, it will be really nice too. Then let's talk about my second favorite uh, from these new releases, which was Macaron Bourbon. Let's spray it. Yeah, so Macaron Bourbon to me is less unique in the sense that it's reminding me of many boozy rose fragrances that you had at some point. I don't know, I feel like at some point there was a period for when we had lots of boozy rose fragrances. But it has this Damada note, which is really, really potent to me or to my nose. I don't know, maybe Davana is a note that I'm not always fond of. So I definitely detect it really well, but and somehow it reminds me, because of this Davana note of um, I Dream of Paris by Floraiku, which I like also. It's a bit bitter in the opening, the rose and the... The rose is quite fruity, like red fruit. And it has a bitterness in the opening. But on my skin, it's, it's not bitter. It's, uh, it's more sweet, <laughs> as usual. 
yeah, I think it has vanilla also, but I don't smell it that much in that one. I mostly get a fully jammy rose with some Davana, a boozy rose. Yeah, which is nice. I, I really like that. But there is something also in the opening. It doesn't last long, but that reminds me of this oud accord that we have sometimes in fragrances when they don't use uh, real oud but try to, you know, <laughs> make you feel like you're smelling oud. And I quickly had that in the opening. This is, I don't know, it doesn't last long, like um, five to ten seconds. So I don't like the, the first seconds in the opening. But after that, it's really nice. So yeah, you see, I've been wearing it also. More to go out because yeah, I feel like this one is more potent and people around you need to enjoy this uh, jammy, sweet, almost whiny rose, you know, <laughs> um, syrupy rose to, to, yeah, to enjoy it. And after that, we had the last one, which was my least favorite. I feel like, yeah, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about it. So this one is Pavlova. So it's hard for me to pick it because uh, I didn't used it a lot as you can see and this one is the fruity one let's say of the of the range so this one smells like a cocktail of fruits to me <laughs> mainly pineapple um, which is something that I like but you know at some point I feel like pineapple was super popular <laughs> maybe since they released uh, uh, Aventus and I feel like uh, we could, after that, we could smell pineapple everywhere in fragrances and uh, maybe I got tired of that. But yeah, <laughs> so this one is quite coconutty also. Yeah, I feel like I didn't smell that before. It was mostly, maybe that's the coconut that I, I don't like that much. You know, I'm not fond of coconut. I feel like it's working really well with um, some floral notes. You know, like these solar fragrances, Monoi and whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know, it's like a, it's, this coconut note is quite milky. And yet it smells more like a piña colada to me than a <laughs> pavlova, I don't know. But yeah, if you want to smell like a piña colada, then <laughs> maybe you would enjoy this one. Uh, I feel like even if it's fruity, uh, it's quite unisex because yeah, we used to smell this note in many fragrances from for men these last um, 20 years, <laughs> but yeah. Nice, but not something that I would like to wear maybe for fall or winter, maybe more for spring or beginning of summer when it's not too hot because it's sweet. I feel like it could be quite cloying, but I'm not super fond of um, fruity fragrances. So maybe that's why. It's nice, but less my liking. Yeah. So after that, what I wanted to wear was um, comforting fragrances, and I really enjoy Saint Honoré, so I was looking for other nutty <laughs> fragrances. So one that I wore is Une Pistache by Obvious. And yeah, this is drier, less sweet, and more milky, I would say. Super almondy. I really like the pistachio note in this one, but in the base, it's more uh, dry and woody. Yeah, I think it has sandalwood too, but sandalwood to me is a... Sometimes it can be milky, sometimes it can be dry. It's hard to do, to explain, but I feel like it has both quality here. It's like milky helping the milky qualities of maybe of maybe the heliotrope. To me is a note that can be a smell like uh, almond milk to me. But it has this dry effect in the in the base. So yeah, I really enjoyed that one. It's definitely a comforting fragrance, one that I like to wear also when I go to bed. So yeah. Okay, so after that I wore also another nutty fragrance, but this is also an iris sweet fragrance. And this is Iris Dragé by Maison Lancôme. So I feel like maybe they are all discontinued now. I've not heard of them for a while, so I don't think they are releasing new fragrances now, which is a pity because at some point, maybe 10 years ago, they released really great fragrances and they stopped. So yeah, it's kind of a pity, but okay. 
But I'm still enjoying Iris Dragé. I feel like it's, a, it's still a really great fragrance. If you love Iris, sweet Iris, uh, it's super almondy also. It's super comforting to me. This is one that will cut through the cold. I mean, this is not one that you would like to wear when it's quite hot outside <laughs> because it could be quite cloying. But when it's cold, I feel like it has this elegance of the iris, but also something um, comforting and a bit girly, you know, with this sweetness. Really nice. Quite unusual, even if there was um, yeah, another release, which was uh, not similar, but made me think of that one, which was Iris Shot by Olfactive Studio, which is, um, yeah, it's a bit different, but you know, if you can't find Iris Dragé anymore, maybe you, you would enjoy uh, uh, that one by Olfactive Studio, which is also really, really great. I think at some point I will give um, a decant of this uh, to my mother because she really enjoyed it when I, I was wearing it. And yeah, she she likes really sweet fragrances, so I feel like maybe this one is quite sweet, for, so she likes it. Uh, just to give you an idea, she loves La Vie est Belle, she loves Alien, um, Alien <laughs> by Mugler, so... Yeah, but okay, I, I'm still enjoying it. This is not one that I wear a lot, but uh, I'm still appreciating it when I wear it. Another iris fragrance that I still enjoy is Iris de Nuit by Healy. I feel like this one is maybe one of my favorite iris of all time. Um, because it has, uh, it emphasizes this violet facet of the iris. This one is more floral to me. It's a bit green also in the opening and I love that. <laughs> I love this green opening. Yeah, it's also a bit musky, but uh, maybe not white musk. I feel like this one is working really well on my skin. So yeah, usually white musk doesn't work on me. Uh, I really love that. It's like a um, slightly woody floral iris, um, violety. Uh, really beautiful. I feel the juice is a bit violet too, but oh, really nice. Super comforting, elegant to me. I feel like Iris is comforting and elegant <laughs> to, my, to me, maybe. But this one is maybe even more elegant than uh, Iris Dragé because Iris Dragé is, um, is quite sweet. Here you are, it's not sweet, it's more, yeah, the violet is uh, emphasizing the, the iris or the iris is emphasizing the violet, but you have this powdery facet here that you have in Iris Dragé, but Iris Dragé is more because of the almond. Here it's more, it's more because of the, um, the violet, but yeah, really beautiful. Okay, so after that, we need to talk <laughs> about the new Chalimar. So Chalimar Millésime Jasmin. And this was one that I uh, talked about, maybe this was my last video, I don't remember when I um, unboxed it and talked about this one. And at the beginning I felt, okay, it's nice, but I was not looking for it. I put it aside for a few weeks and I came back to it slowly and now I feel like I'm starting to enjoy it more. It took me some time to understand this one because I feel like uh, maybe I was expecting a warm jasmine, you know, I feel like this one is quite cold. It's quite soapy, um, less on me, but and with the tonka, I feel like the tonka bean is bringing something almondy to it. And some, somehow it reminded me of uh, jasmine marzipane, which is also quite a cold jasmine because it's powdery, it's almondy. Yeah, and I feel like maybe they use the same jasmine in it, but when I wear it, I smell it on paper right now. It doesn't smell at all the same as I, on my skin. That's crazy, huh? It's super soapy on, uh, on paper. It's less soapy on my skin, it's more Almondy mixed with the, the tonka bean. You smell much more the vanilla, the tonka bean mixed with the jasmine on me, on my skin. And the jasmine note makes me think a lot of uh, jasmine marzipane. Yeah, in the end, much better on my skin, less on paper, but yeah, really enjoying it. I feel like it's this cold jasmine would work really well also in cold weather because it has a strong base also. It has a strong vanilla and tonka beans behind. I smell that, I mean, almost equally with the jasmine. So the jasmine is not on top, it's not above it. I feel like it's mixed, really mixed with the, these other notes. 
yeah, and I feel like I'm, I've been enjoying it more and more. So yeah, it's a good sign. <laughs> and as I was wearing um, this one, so the Jasmine version, I was really longing for the other ones. So the first one, if I can find my bottle that I was really longing for, because it, it got colder and I think this was, yeah, one still one of my favorite version. Oh yes, it's the vanilla, vanilla one. So you can see I've been enjoying that one <laughs> since it was released. Oh yeah. So beautiful. I really love the, the, this version. I feel like they made a really good job mixing the different facets of the vanilla. It's quite dark. It has this darkness, but it has also this light. <laughs> I mean, there's a real balance in this vanilla. I feel like it's it's sweet, it's gourmand, but at the same time, it has some depth, some darkness. So this is exactly what I love in a vanilla fragrance. I don't like something that is too dry or too strong because uh, to my nose, it, at some point it's unbearable and it makes me sneeze, so it's too much. I don't like a vanilla that is too sweet because it's cloying for me, but when you find the right balance, oh, I feel like it's perfect. And this one is perfect to me. <laughs> I definitely prefer that one to uh, Spiritueux Double Vanille, for example. I feel like the quality of the vanilla they use here is gorgeous. Um, yeah. I really hoped it was not, um, yeah, not discontinued, that it was not a um, temporary version or something that won't last, but um, yeah. I hope that they will bring that one one day, even if I have a backup. <laughs> and after that, it was still cold, so I thought, okay, let's go for sweet, <laughs> a sweet one. So this is the iris version, which is much more sweet to me than the vanilla one. The vanilla they used in that one is more vanillin, I guess. You know, it's more the ones that you find in cake. So somehow it's like a nice cupcake. <laughs> A bit, yeah, it's a bit sweet, like Iris Dragé. So if you like Iris Dragé, maybe you would like this version, the Iris version. Oh, but I, I still really enjoy it. I feel like it has an edge, you know, it has something more, like a, yeah, like a Guerlain fragrance. It, it has this signature, this elegance of a, um, a Guerlain fragrance, but still sweet and comforting. Really enjoying that one too. I feel like this one for winter will be perfect. And the last one that I love for fall because this is a note that I don't know screams fall to me. This is the Tonka version. Uh, gorgeous. <laughs> I really love that one. It's powdery, it's almondy, it's a little bit tobacco y. Oh, I love that one. It smells a bit more masculine to me, but a bit more. Elevated, it's hard to, to say. It's, it's more chic, I feel. Um, yeah, it's a bit soapy too, like, um, yeah, like in the, the Jasmine version. I feel like in the Jasmine version, there is a lot of Tonka, yeah. Oh, I really love that one. I definitely understand why men and women uh, really love this version. I feel like it's the more unisex version of all the ones, the special ones they released. Beautiful. <laughs> if you love Tonka for fall, I feel like it's a note that is really, really great for fall. If you can still find this one, try it. And of course, as I was wearing this Tonka version of Shalimar, it made me think of another Tonka fragrance by Guerlain, which is Tonka Imperial, and I really, really enjoy for fall also. I'm spelling it right now on paper and just the same on paper. I'm not fond of it. <laughs> on my skin, it's gorgeous, but on paper, I feel like it's even a bit, it smells like a bit medicinal on paper. And I don't have that at all on my skin. So yeah, let me describe what it smells on my skin, maybe <laughs> because it smells better on me. Uh, on me, I have something a bit aromatic um, that makes me think of uh, walking in the woods, but you know, when you find these uh, natural uh, aromatic herbs that are uh, growing in the woods. So this is the impression that I have with it. And I have lots of almond facets from this Tonka Imperial. I mean, oh, 
It's super also powdery and comforting to me. A bit dry and a bit boozy at the same time. Oh, it's really beautiful. I heard that they discontinued that one. I really don't understand why. I thought it was one of their best sellers or maybe not in France, I don't know, or only in other countries. Oh, really gorgeous, yeah. Talking about their best seller, <laughs> I think that the next one I wore is maybe one of their best sellers in France, so I don't think that this one will be ever discontinued. Ah, let me grab it. So maybe this one was in the older ones, I mean, is one of the most wearable um, fragrance of their collection. I mean, anyone would enjoy that one because, you know, the, the other ones, I feel like you need to enjoy fragrances, you know, to really understand them and like them uh, the first time you, you smell them. But this one, so this is Cuir Beluga, and to me this is full-on vanilla. <laughs> if you love vanilla, for sure you would love that one. And I think I heard that this is the one that, has, that they sell the most in this collection in France. So I'm not surprised. <laughs> And it, it's a vanilla, but which has almost a texture to it, you know. So it's not really a leather huh? because they called it cuir. But to me, it's more like a sweat, you know. I have a sweat feeling from this vanilla. I really have this texture in the fragrance. It doesn't smell like sweat to me, but it has the texture of it. It's weird to explain, but <laughs> otherwise, to me, it's full on vanilla, but a beautiful one. <laughs> really cozy and comforting, doesn't project a lot on me. It's more like a cozy velvet um, blanket, I don't know. Yeah, it's more intimate. It's a bit musky also, I guess. Yeah, on me it's a vanilla thread. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, quite simple, but still really beautiful. Uh, I really enjoyed wearing it. I think it was in September. Um, this is not one that I wear a lot, as you can see. I think this is one of the fragrances that I wear the less with the Spiritus Double Vanille from this collection. But when I take this one, when I go back to it, I always really enjoy it. So after that, uh, what do we have? I had some yeah, floral, fruity, musky fragrance. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the first one. I don't know in which order I would take them, but okay. Let's start with this one. So this is just a mini version of Oni, let's say Honeysuckle and Davana. Let me try to zoom in if it wants to. No, it doesn't want to. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Otherwise you will have to believe me. But yeah, okay. Honeysuckle and Davana. Um, now that I see the, <laughs> the name of it, maybe I was longing for it because I don't wear it that much, but maybe I was longing for it because I uh, wore Macaron Bourbon, which has this note of Davana, and it made me think of that one. You know, this is something that I have a lot. You know, when I wear a fragrance, sometimes I smell a facet of it, a note of it that makes me think of another fragrance and then I'm longing for this other fragrance and then I'm wearing this other fragrance, which makes me think again of another fragrance. And then this is how sometimes uh, I end up wearing 30 fragrances in a, in a month, you know. So I don't know if you work the same way, but this is, I don't know how my mind works, I guess. <laughs> I associate these fragrances with other fragrances and uh, yeah this is how I ended up uh, wearing Honeysuckle and Davana I guess but yeah so from this one I have lots of rose I'm surprised because they call it Honeysuckle maybe I get more rose than Honeysuckle from it a lot of rose and Davana for sure and some Honeysuckle on top and the mix of these notes is really pleasant it's quite strong for uh, a Jo Malone fragrance I think this is the strongest one from the ones that I have. It projects a lot compared to the other ones, which has, which have, yeah, I don't know, more quiet quality, let's say. But yeah, beware, this one is quite strong. And if you're, <laughs> it's in the Cologne, normal Cologne range, but yeah, beautiful floral fragrance, quite sweet. It has a lot of sweet, sweetness again with, with this rose and Davana. I feel like it's bringing a lot the jamminess of the rose and honeysuckle. Yes, it has this, uh, this flower is quite, it has some sweetness too, but 
are really pretty. I feel like it's a, just a pretty floral fragrance and sometimes this is what I'm longing for. So yeah. After that I have another rose fragrance. It's a fruity rose. Also quite strong, <laughs> even stronger I guess, which is Musc Intense. So this one is a musk fragrance, but not only. To me, it's mainly a rose pear fragrance. And I feel like pear to me is a, always a note that makes me think of um, fall. So yeah, yeah, and the note of pear here is really great. It makes me think of poor William, um, let me say, William's pear. Yeah, it smells like a William's pear with some rose and a nice blanket of musk. <laughs> That is super comforting. The musk smells almost like aldehydes. To me, it has this soapy, uh, powdery quality that I find in aldehydes. It works really well in the cold too. I wore that one uh, last winter when it was snowing and it worked really well too. So definitely one of my favorite by Nicola. If it's not my favorite by this Nicola, I know that this is an old fragrance. They, an old fragrance. They released it maybe 30, 40 years ago. And it has something really classic to it. Um, but to me, to me, it's just really beautiful and elegant. It could be almost a Chanel fragrance. I wouldn't be surprised. And my last one is a fruity fragrance, which I was really surprised to be longing for, but I don't know, I was really <laughs> wanting to wear that one. So I found my bottle of Blackberry and Bear, which as you can see is not something that I wore a lot. Maybe I got this one for free with one of my purchases at some point and uh, yeah, so I really enjoyed it uh, lately. I don't know, I was really longing for this red fruit fragrance, but it has some greenness to cut, you know, with this fruitiness and the sweetness from the fruits. Yeah, it's quite green in the, in the opening. I would say even aromatic to my nose, yeah. It's like finding these blackberries in the grass, you know, like they, they fell from the tree. You say tree for that, but <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> and you find them in, in the grass, on the ground, and, the, you know, you have this mixture of, of scents and Oh. Also something that I find really comforting, um, most of the time the red fruits on my skin smell uh, not that nice, like a bit bitter or acidic or almost like, hmm, I was going to say cat pee, but you know what I mean, <laughs> not nice. Um, and I had the, the, this experience with the Rouge Trafalgar by Dior. Liked it on paper, uh, got a sample of it, wore it on my skin, and then everyone was looking at me like, who peed on your... <laughs> Did a cat pee on your on your coat or something? Even my mother, she made me... Yeah, she told me uh, that... Uh, yeah, she didn't know what I was wearing, but it was not working well, and I knew that, but... <laughs> but yeah, when I tried it on my skin for the first time, I didn't know that it was not going to work well, but okay. Uh, yeah, long story short, yeah. <laughs> so this one with Blackberry and Bay, I don't have this issue. I feel like this one's working really well on my skin. Uh, it's not musky. Maybe that's the issue also. Maybe it's red fruits and musk that don't work well on me. I don't feel like this one is musky. Not woody either. Uh, no, it smells more green, almost mossy, or I don't know. Yeah, like you found the... the the fruits in the in the grass in the moss and it's quite aromatic really really enjoying that one i think like it's quite pretty uh it took me a while to to enjoy this one but yeah i'm really liking it i feel like for fall this one is also really nice it's not super strong otherwise uh yeah i think like it would i know it i don't think like it would work in winter but for fall it's still nice Okay, so I made some space so we can talk about my favorites of the month. Uh, so for sure, I think, yes, we can include <laughs> the new Chalimar and especially the new Saint Honoré because I wore it a lot. There were new fragrances uh, to my collection and I really enjoyed them. They were completely new discoveries for me. 
but I had the occasion to try some new fragrances. So yeah, I went to Le Printemps and I was able to try the new Dior collection. So I don't remember exactly the name. Is it Les Elixirs or something like that? I feel like it's quite a trend now to have um, extrait de parfum <laughs> versions of your actual fragrances. So this is what Dior did. And I tried a few of them. So I was honestly pleasantly surprised by them, not by the price, <laughs> but I was pleasantly surprised by the scent themselves. I really enjoyed uh, the version of Rouge, Trava Rouge Trafalgar, the um, extra de parfum version, because the previous version, as I said earlier, was not working at all on my skin. And this one was really pretty, working really well on me. I uh, felt like it was almost a different fragrance. Uh, the to me, they were all different compared to the original version, but they had indeed some notes in, in common or some notes were em emphasized. But yeah, to me, they could be completely dif different fragrances. But Rouge Trafalgar for me was a pleasant surprise. I liked the, oh, the Lily of the Valley one, but uh, it was not for me, but it was nice. My only disappointment, I feel, was for um, oh, the Amber one, Ambre Nuit, because I really enjoyed the original version, and to me, I'm still attached to it, so I prefer the original version. I know uh, it's quite controversial, maybe. Some people prefer the, the new version, but I prefer the old one. So that's it for Dior. After that, I ordered a few samples of the new Atelier Materi fragrances. So again, uh, extrait de parfum. <laughs> so. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's a trend lately. Let me see where I put my samples. Okay, so these new ones, uh, yeah, the samples were even more expensive than that. Okay, so the first one was Neroli, if you can see it, Neroli Asbaya. The second one was Ambre Papier, and the last one that I tried was uh, Burgundy Oud. So honestly, I really enjoyed them. Uh, I still have the card <laughs> nearby but uh, I won't buy them. And the reason for it is quite simple. They all reminded me of a fragrance that I already have. Honestly, they are really nice. If you don't have these fragrances, <laughs> they made me think of, but I don't see the point in having something that smells really close for me. So yeah, so the first one, Neroli Asbaya, is really nice. The, the Neroli is super sweet. Gourmandie, yeah, it has something that reminded me definitely of Love Don't Be Shy, or maybe Give Move the Noel, but at some point it has something almost powder, powdery, almost like cacao. I don't know if it has cacao in it, but it made me think of cacao, so maybe it's almond, tonka, or something else, but I thought about cacao. <laughs> and it's really nice. I really enjoyed that one, honestly. This is one that I could wear, but I think I would not buy it because it's reminding me too much of other fragrances I already have. But if you love sweet, uh, narrowly, gourmand narrowly, definitely try this one. It's a bit smoky also in the base, but just a little bit, you know, really at the end. And uh, yes, I sprayed this paper that I'm sniffing like one, two days ago. So yeah, <laughs> I think like they have quite a good longevity, hopefully, because they are extra de parfum. They're still quite strong. And the second one that I tried, Ambre Papier. So I think the inspiration, I heard about it, that it's inspired by Papier d'Arménie, which makes sense. Yes, indeed, it reminds me of Papier d'Arménie. So it has something slightly incensey, smoky, definitely smoky, yeah. Paper, maybe a little bit, but I feel like it's more smoky, almost leathery at some point. I really like this one and it made me think of, um, yeah, because I feel like there is something warmer, maybe like something like benzoin or vanilla in the base. And it made me think of a baby cat, <laughs> you know, in this uh, smoky, leathery aspect of something like benzoin or vanilla. But yeah, definitely made me think of baby cat. So this is not something, a softer version maybe, <laughs> but this is why I wouldn't buy this one. And the last one I really enjoyed also. Yeah, it's like red fruits and wood, smoky. 
maybe slightly leathery also. Definitely made me think of Sherry Wood that I have and that I love. So yeah, definitely a good one also, but I already have Sherry Wood, so I don't feel like I need Burgundy Wood. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> the one that is maybe a little bit different at some point is this one, because I feel like I have this impression of cacao, but not at the beginning, really in the middle phase of the evolution. I don't have it at the end anymore, so if it was maybe a bit more present in the, in the fragrance, um, yeah, this is something I would think of, but okay, I think I would wear, I will wear my, my samples, but I won't buy them. But they are really, really nice if you don't have these fragrances I talked about, so yeah. And my last discovery was the blind buy of uh, Travel Size by Le Couvent. So it's Le Couvent, it used to be Le Couvent des Minimes. So they have again a special collection. I don't remember the name, but they released a few fragrances in this collection. Let me see, because I have the, the box nearby. And this one is the Tonka one. So of course, when I saw Tonka, this is a note that I enjoy. And yeah, so I, I bought it. It was not that expensive, so I bought it. And also what made me f buy it, I guess, is that this one was created by Jean-Claude Elena. So he created some of the, these new fragrances. He created also the Mimosa one, uh, which I tried quickly and was quite nice if you like Mimosa. I'm not fond of this note, but it's powdery, it's uh, woody also at the same time. Quite strong for an Elena fragrance, but I really enjoyed that one, um, which is not often the, the case for me, eh, for Mimosa fragrances, but I liked it. And this Tonka one, honestly, the first time I tried it, I was disappointed. I didn't like it at all. I was like, did they make, a, I don't know. I thought they made a mistake, didn't send me the right fragrance because the only thing I could smell was something like a fragrance, you know, designer fragrance for men. So I don't know if it's my fault if I made a mistake and sprayed something else instead because I was tired. <laughs> but this is not at all what I get now when I'm smelling it. And this is something that made me think, again, of another fragrance, which is a fragrance by L'Artisan Parfumeur, which is called uh, Mandarina Corsica. So, yes, I have this impression of um, a citrus that is candied, caramelized almost. So I don't know if this is an orange or a mandarin orange. But I have this impression of a fruit that has been candied, like exactly the same impression that I have in uh, Mandarina Corsica. I'm wondering also if it doesn't have yes, yeah, some similar notes like caramel, mandarin orange, or maybe myrtle also. And this tonka in the base, which makes it so gourmand. This is really nice. This is something I would really enjoy for, for Christmas, for example. I love to wear Mandarina Corsica for Christmas. Another one <laughs> to wear that period. So yeah, really, really nice. Yeah, I'm glad I discovered that one. And yes, just in case I didn't like it, I just have a 15 ml. So this is something that I, I would like also to spray in my house. I don't know, I feel like it could be a nice candle too. So yeah, if you're looking for a gift for someone who likes this kind of fragrances or yeah, <laughs> if you want to try these new fragrances, I really enjoyed that one. So voila, that's it for my discoveries of the month. Uh, tell me what you've been wearing lately for fall and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye!